Hello, this is here, and welcome to another video. Today we're doing another video, um, reading uh, Hermitcraft, um, Redstone Infestation, uh, continuation of Season Clockwork and Hermit Outcry. We are in Chapter 12, Part 5, Part 5. Um, yeah, this is my second take, because, oh, well, I tried to record another one right after Part 4, but, ooh, I needed to rest my voice a little bit. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might hear some background noise, but, yeah, try not to pay too much attention to it. <laughs> Chapter 12. And maybe more. Probably more. I want to try to do more than just one chapter. Which <coughs> Green was led down the flight of stairs, counting each floor quietly in his head calculated how many floors there were in the building, which he realized was mostly underground, deeper than he would have thought. No wonder no one from the cause had found this place or knew about it. How long had this place been around? He said nothing as he arrived at the last floor, finding himself in an open room with about six cells. Two of them were open while the others were closed. He couldn't be sure if any of the remaining four were locked. Or if there were other people in there. Get inside, the guard behind him and his friend demanded as he glanced over his shoulder, still seeing one of the men had their arrow knocked and ready to fire, noting the sickly red glow on the tip of the arrow as he swallowed, chills shivering down his spine as he walked into one of the cells with Impulse right behind him. Shouldn't we be separated? Impulse asked quickly as Green heard the door slam as a lock clicked in the door. We need the extra room open for anyone else that might need it. The man said simply with a shrug. Mr. A will see you shortly. Isn't he still away? Green pressed as he went over to the door nervously. He is coming for a visit within an hour or so. Another man piped in. So you two have some time to catch up. Yeah, the third man finally taunted. He's got quite a surprise for you two. Especially you, Impulse. Me? Impulse asked. Startled as he pointed a finger at himself, his feeling of unease filled the other hermit. He could see the expression shifting, as his friend's face, on his friend's face, as well. Surprise, unease, fear. Where have you taken the keys? The hermit finally demanded, as he ran to the door angrily, fist pounding on the middle door. The first man only shook his head as he smiled. That's not my place to say, hermit. You, I'm sure you'll see him soon, if you're lucky. You can't do this to us. You won't get away with this. Impulse shouted as the three men and footsteps began to fade back toward the stairwell. Get back here, you cowards! Sorry, I'm not doing impersonations. <laughs> but yeah, I can imagine if they that. <laughs> you cowards. <laughs> Don't play. Green bit, bit his bottom lip. As the hermit's fears pounding on the metal door finally slowed to a stop, he saw angry tears rolling down his friend's face. Impulse? Where is he? Impulse whispered, shaking his head as his fist still rested on the cool metal, keeping his eyes glued to the room outside. We'll find him, Green said gently, as he went over to his friend, putting a hand on his friend's shoulder. She spotted the lights in the other room flicker rapidly as he swallowed. He glanced over at his friend. Knowing he saw it too, Simpulse pulled away from the metal door. Green watched the hermit fold out the communicator in his pocket as he held it in his hand, going over to the corner quietly as he sat down. The hermit watched as Impulse fiddled with the machine before he heard the click of a connection as Green stood in front of the door, casually, glancing out as the lights flickered again, this time more forcefully. Green looked over at Impulse as the hermit tried to fiddle with the connection. Yeah, someone else is down here with us. It's interfering with the machine. The hermit nodded as he looked out the window, lights flashing a little more. He cleared his throat. Before he could say a word, the flickering slowed down as Green looked back at his friend. You good now? Yeah, thanks for blocking the view from the door. It both smiled, shaking its head as a voice finally came through. The screen on the machine was no longer glitching in and out. Impulse? Is that you? Beetle's voice asked quickly, having heard some of what was being said already. Yeah, it pulled still a little more calmly, but he still sounded a little shaky. How's everything going with you? 
Everyone safe? Mostly, Beatups chuckled. We have been trying to look all over for you, but we can't seem to locate you. Were you the one to send that signal to me? Yep. Impulse confirmed. Oh, good. How did you even get your hands on one of those communicators? Beatups asked happily. It's a long story. Impulse sighed as Korean leaned against the door. Thing is, we need your help. Lots of backup. There are a lot of YouTubers here. Mr. A has been holding these people here for months, if not years. Oh my. Beatups gasped in horror. I've got to tell Rose about this. We'll get you two out, and everyone else, I promise. Thanks, they both said with a small smile. He looked over at Great. The hermit glancing over his shoulder to see the lights stop flickering entirely. Either whoever it was was in here with them had fallen asleep or in a new sense of hope. Time is of the essence. There is someone down here with us who has the redstone virus thing, so we might need help with that. So bring the antidote just in case. Beat up press. Bring it anyway. They've got more of those nasty arrows. Green added as he swallowed. Those men won't be afraid to use those if they have to. Especially if members of the cause come to help. You got it. Beat up replied. Do you know where they get the main stash from? Last floor. There's a laboratory I can see on the right of where we are. Green reported calmly. Daddy looked out, seeing the opening where he could see some tables in a bre in brewing stands. There are seven floors of this building, and that means a lot of people to rescue. You got it. Just be careful, Beatus replied. Give us a few hours, maybe? Green... <coughs> <laughs> Mr. A plans to see us in an hour or so, Impulse said cautiously. So the sooner the better. No, I'll tell Rose everything, Beatus replied confidently. You're getting out of here, all of you. Thanks again, Beatus, Impulse said gravely. As the two of them wished each other well and good luck, just as the hermit heard found the footsteps pounding down the stairs, Grand looked over to the cell window as he saw three men enter the room. Not the same ones as last time. Put the commun away. Com communicator away. Now. Grand said quickly as he looked over to Impulse, who scrambled to pocket the machine. As the men ran over to the cell, the other hermit stumbled to his feet. Grian stepped back, and the door swung open as one of the men grabbed him and shoved him to the wall, to a wall. Where is the communicator you stole, YouTuber? The man holding him spat, spit hitting the hermit's cheek as Grian winced. What communicator? Grian played, laughing nervously as he struggled to push the man away from the man away. The man only tightened his grip. Let Grian go! It both demanded as Grian watched him try to lunge for the man holding the hermit down, yelping as he was tackled to the ground. Search both of them! The second man snapped. We can't have them telling their friends where the base is. It's bad enough the intern didn't tell sooner. We don't have it, Grian insisted quickly. I dropped it into one of the cells when I was being chased. With a signal, the man pressed firmly as the hermit squeaked in pain as he nodded solemnly. Hoping the man would believe the lie. Well, that's an interesting story. And then the man piped in. As he heard Impulse gasp of horror. His green looked down to see the man was holding the device in his hand. His friend was carrying it. That's not his fault. He didn't do anything. Green explained as he tried to push the man off him. It was no use. As the man on top of his friend tossed the object to the standing guard. I gave him the communicator thinking you, were, you would only check me and not him. I wasn't able to get it working, and neither was he. <laughs> I like, doubt that. Seeing as he's the one who made the specific model. The second man scoffed as he looked over at the man who was getting to his feet. Grab him. We're going to have to give him a justifiable punishment. I don't think that would be necessary just yet. A voice said calmly, the voice distant out in the hall as the lights flickered again, almost appearing angry. Hmm. Mr. A, I thought you weren't coming for another half an hour. The second man chimed quickly. Plans changed. I thought I'd come over to see how our neighbors have been doing. Quite disappointing to come across you three immediately threatening punishment without my consent. <sighs> Especially with these two, Mr. A said bluntly as his footsteps grew louder. Appearing at the doorway, he smiled at the two roommates. Let me go. Just keep an eye on the stairway. I want to leave the chat and have a chat with these two. Alone. Yes, sir, the second man complained, sounding quite defeated and disappointed 
as the guard holding him finally released his grip. As the hermit ran over to his friend, who had managed to stumble to his feet. You okay? Green asked him quickly. Impul shook his head, not saying anything as he looked toward where Mr. A was, waiting expectantly as Green followed his gaze, seeing the man just drink from the Impulso. <coughs> Knowing that neither of them had a choice in the matter. The communicator was gone, and they had no way of knowing how soon help would come. He hoped soon, because whatever Mr. A was planning to do couldn't be good. Chapter 13 Green and Impulse followed the man into the larger room, leaving the dimly lit cell behind as he took the room around him, took in the room around him, seeing that it was bigger than he realized. He hadn't gotten a good chance to look around, seeing as the men forcefully shoved both him and his friend into the cell without any warning. The walls looked to be painted a midnight blue, perhaps even purple, with the redstone lamps hanging above it. Iron chains surrounded by iron trap doors, which confused Armin. How are those trap doors doing that? Pretty simple, really. Mr. H shrugged, gesturing to the other cell and spelled. No matter. Let me show you around first. Get you two acquainted with where you'll be staying for a while. How long are you thinking? A few months? We both asked wearily. Far longer than that, Hermes. The man said casually as they walked toward the laboratory. The blinding white walls seemed to glow and red and rod lighting above. <laughs> you stole those, didn't you? Green insisted, pointing up to the end rods. Yes and no. One of our allies showed us how to make them. And once we had some help, the YouTubers provided what we needed. The man shrugged. They helped build this place block by block. You forced people to build their own prisons. Impulse cast or by that aspect. What was stopping them from putting traps or tools they could use, later use to escape? Mr. A smiled coldly, not answering the Hermes' question with words as they entered the laboratory. There was a large metal vault-like door in the right wall of the room as the Hermit immediately found it. This is where we do all our magic. To create the redstone bug we've been perfecting for months. Almost a year, even. Hey, so you can infect everyone with it? Impulse demanded <coughs> firmly. You know it affects you too, right? We're working on a variant for that, the man shrugged as they walked over to a cauldron, which was full of red liquid as an uneasy feel feeling filled the hermit. Though, if we're not taking any innocent lives, we have no issues, yes? But you are, Impulse insisted. You're forcing people to stay here when they've done nothing against you. You torture them, experiment on them, and then kill them when you don't need them anymore. How's it anyway, okay? You wouldn't understand, Impulse, the man said as he straightened, looking over to the vault that Green was still looking at. Would you like to open that for me, Green? I'm not sure I want to, the Impulse, the hermit admi admitted nervously, trying to ignore the urge to try anyway. What's behind it? Well... You can't know until you open it, now can you? The man mused as he gestured for the two hermits to come closer to the bolt. Green swallowed as he looked over to, at Impulse. You think we have a high chance of just booking it out of here? Impulse shook his head, whispering. No, of course we don't. You think you'd be smart enough to try to escape? Did I suggest you think again? Mr. A warned, clearing his throat, having heard them. Especially since I could easily have my men kill every prisoner in this building if I desired. For what gain? Green asked. Just so that you, just that you managed to hide at least a hundred prisoners under Rose's nose. Miss Well nodded. Pretty much. Though I'd say it'd be closer to a thousand overall. What? Impulse gasped. His eyes growing wide with terror as the man laughed. Come, see what I have to have here. Mister A urged. Gesturing again for the hermits to come to him. Green reluctantly ob obeyed, checking to make sure his friend was right behind him. As Mr. A opened the door, opening da down to a large pit below as the hermit looked down. Scrambling backward, he saw a movement below. He didn't. Green said nervously as Impulse's own face would pale when he saw what was down there. How did she manage to reproduce them? Pretty simple. There's a regular telfish spawner down there. 
and every now and again, we fill the room with a little bit of redstone, a redstone shower. You don't want to know how many of them there are. There are. He closed the door as he latched it, looking back at the two hermits. If you try to escape again, I'll make sure these little friends of mine have a little hearty meal. Gross. <laughs> Impulse said quietly, scrunching his nose in disgust as he shook his head, walking away from the vault. I chuckled. Don't you worry, that's not my plan for you, either of you. Cooperation is key here. And I want to make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah, but we don't know what that plan is, Green demanded. Or why Skiz is a, why it involves Skiz. Ah, uh, yes, Min nodded. As he walked to the laboratory door, the hermit gladly followed him out of the room, wanting to be far from the vault as they could. And the man led them out to the last cell in the room. Unlocking the door, they stepped aside, revealing the interior. <coughs> the room was smaller than the other cells he'd seen over the years, a quarter of the size, if you had to guess. At the end of the small cell was a cot, a cold, quartz-like surface that seemed to stand out against the cobbled floor, roof, and walls. On the bed, the hermit could see someone lying on his back, his head turning slightly to see them. Wrists and ankles strapped to Scott. Skiz! Impulse cried, barging into the room as he pushed Mr. A aside. He didn't seem too phased by it as the urban went over to his bed. Impulse? Skiz asked, his voice no more than a whisper, sounding dry and hoarse from screaming. Green swallowed as he saw red veins crawling down his arms and up the YouTuber's neck as a man groaned, trying to move. What has he done to you? Impulse asked quietly. Looking his friend over as Mr. A took a back, look back at Green curiously. I was hoping we would have reunited you two sooner than we did, the man, Mr. A said calmly. But of course, your friends had to step in and get in the way of that. You can't get away with this, Impulse said firmly, turning from his friend to face the man. You won't. I just can help you, Mr. A asked as he raised an eyebrow. No one knows you two are here, just like everyone else. That's what you think. That's what you think. Impulse replied. As he attempted to lunge at the man, Mr. A stepped aside as the hermit threw himself onto the floor at the man's feet. As Mr. A grabbed the hermit by the arm and pulled him up. You know very well I wouldn't hesitate to get rid of the both of you right now, Mr. A said in a cold whisper as the hermit tried to pull out of the His grip. It would be too easy to just be done with you both, seeing as how much of a nuisance you've become. Who's gonna stop me? Me. <laughs> Skids rasped out. The lights suddenly flickered again, and now the drop door is flapped up to down. <laughs> Mr. Hay laughed. The barely is dead on your own at this point without being in constant pain. What good would you do? What good would that do? You know better than to underestimate us, Mr. A. Green pointed out. Your brother and Gerald fell for the same thing. We managed to stop them because you failed to see how we could. For all you know, Skiz could really could easily use that pain to his advantage. Skiz managed to smile at that as Mr. A scowled. Well, someone would have to let him out first. These restraints aren't as rusty this time. Green shrugged, but he stepped forward. If you say you really do want to try to outsmart us, then why aren't you doing it very well? Surely keeping all of your YouTubers in one basket isn't such a good idea, right? Could your men be able to handle a mass rebellion? Gran, what are you doing? <laughs> Bull asked wearily, yelping as he was pushed against the wall by the man. I think you misunderstand me, Gran, the man warned as he narrowed his eyes. If you keep resisting me, the consequences will be severe. Like, let's say... You too managed to escape. What's to stop me from putting bounty over your most of your heads? Hmm? Wouldn't you want us to stay alive so we could, you could torture us? It both asked nervously as the man released him again. The hermit scrambled away. The cell door closed against Green heard footsteps from behind him. That would be ideal, the man replied simply. Perhaps, perhaps if I get rid of the heads of your little rebellion. They would have no ground to stand on. The man's eyes narrowed.
Thanks, Grammarly. As she said, clear. As she said that, clearing his throat as Grant finally whirled around to see two of Mr. and men approaching. Take these two back to their cells. We'll be seeing them again tomorrow. We won't be here by tomorrow, Hitful said defiantly as the man turned to face him. Oh, are you now? Mr. A mused. Even after all I told you. Escape from this prison is impossible, Hitful You aren't going anywhere. Green swallowed as he tried to resist saying anything more. As he went over to his friend and grabbed him by the arm, the two of them walked back to their cell, hearing the footsteps right behind them as they walked into their dusty room. We'll bring you some supper in a few hours, one of the men retorted. Just make sure you don't send down another one of your interns, Green retorted back, if you want a fair fight this time. Is that a threat, Green? Straight's voice asked casually. Keep that up and you won't last long here. The door slammed as Green watched the men walk away, Stray leading the way, and he filled the hermit as he went over to the door, peering out the room beyond. Squeeze. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir, to help, Pulse admitted, almost sounding sad as he said it. He will get it, Green said almost instantly, as he turned to see his friend leaning against the wall, looking partially defeated. It doesn't matter if they turned off the communicator signal. Beat-ups knows where we are. Rose knows where we are. Green lowered his voice to a whisper as he approached his friend. We are getting out of here, one way. I'd hate to fall into that pit, Impulse admitted, looking up at his friend. Or see you or Skid being thrown down there. No one's going down there, I promise. Green assured him. He gave him a side hug. You could see the tears forming in his friend's eyes as he looked toward the door. I just realized something. What? Impulse asked, looking up at him. Flee. They never locked either of our doors. I never heard the click, Green said, now feeling nervous. Can we just go? He both asked quickly as he pushed himself from the wall. That's the thing, Green admitted. He's testing us. Seeing if it's worth our own necks to try to get out. Let's do we? He both asked. Green shook his head. Not yet. Not until we know help is here. I kind of just want to go out and check on skids, though, he both admitted. Maybe we could ask them if they could get one of those medical kits. You know they won't, Green pointed out. She could said. And doing that would put all of us in, in danger. That's what these men want. A reason to punish us. This is so corrupt. Impulse moaned as he put his hands to his face, sliding them down as he shook his head. I know, and Mr. A knows it too. That's why he warned us to behave, Green said calmly. He can't stop them every time anymore. They're still probably mad at us for stealing the communicator. Yes, he really wanted to hurt me because of it. Impulse sighed. Looking over at the door sadly. We hadn't even stolen it. Punish one, punish both. Green shrugged as he scoffed at himself. They'll pay for what they've done. We just need to wait patiently. The others took up. Impulse said nothing, though he didn't have to. Green noticed him nod. He sat down next to the middle door, looking up to the cobbled ceiling overhead. The only sound they could hear was the subtle flap of the trapdoors, the kids having lost the energy to control those now. Green looked away from the door and just stood there in silence, waiting for something he wasn't very good at, especially with tempting a locked door right outside. They could easily see if they could get those three, all three of them out, if they could find what they needed for invisibility potions. Would that even work out? He swallowed as he tried not to think about it. He had to resist getting out of here for the moment. It would be the best case scenario at this point. <sighs> I think this is a good time to stop for now. But yep, we will be going on and finishing. Maybe. Maybe we'll finish. I want to see if we can finish it um, next week. Depending on how I upload these. We'll see. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. Uh, this was part five of um, Redstone Infestation. And I will see you guys in the next one, whenever that might be. Goodbye.